Joe Cortez with the Fair Perform Show here with my co-host John Zimmel. Welcome once again to a wonderful week of boxing. I can say wonderful, John, to some extent. A little black guy because yeah, of what man. happened with the Canelo situation. But fans out there, I want you to know that we are very all disappointed because we were looking forward to the Canelo Triple G, just like yourself. And I know if we say, what the heck happened there? But uh, things would happen. And uh, what I can say, John, is that uh, Canelo has to come forward and say what he has to say. But he says he's innocent. But with the rules and yeah. the drug testing they did on him, they have to say something. And the only way they can get away with something that the commission will accept is if they say we take responsibility. It was unintentional. But we take responsibility. You are responsible for what you put in your body. Right. And if he takes responsibility for what was put in his body, intentionally or unintentionally, then I think he'll get that six-month well, ban well, we'll talk about well, instead well, of a one-year. Exactly. That's what we're looking at. We're looking at hopefully that he uh, admits to that and say unintentional. That's okay. We accept that. So then the commission, I'm not talking on behalf of the commission. Yes. I'm saying those are the guidelines. And then they will give him six months suspension. That'll be, we're looking at September 15th. Uh, Mexican independence, they, then that will be the day that the fight will, will be held. Yeah, hopefully that they will come to their senses and say, you know, mm -hmm. that's the best way to go out. And look, I honestly, as bad as this is, and it is bad, I mean, this is a bummer. We've been waiting for this fight forever, and the first one was just left a bad taste in all of our mouths because of the scoring and the situations that, that occurred at the end of it. But it was a great fight. I mean, these are the two greatest middleweights in the world going at each other, and they're really, really good at it. And so we've been waiting for this fight forever. We've seen, I mean, what, three, four years of talking about it. And then we finally get it, and it's disappointing. Not the fight, but the result. And then we have this fight coming up May 5th, the big rematch that everybody's waiting for. And then this all happens, and it's two failed tests. I think if we can go, I mean, if we can, if Triple G fights on May 5th, which he wants to, and he beats whoever his middleweight contender is, which we all think he will, I think September 15th, we can get the fight without the distractions for the first time in, in five years that we've been waiting for. And, uh, and I think this is probably the best result for boxing. It's, a, it's sad. It's a black guy and it's a bummer. But at the same time, we're not going into this with a shroud of mystery and confusion and, and what could this be? What will this be? What does this mean for both legacies? This is a fight and that's all it is. And I, and I, I think we hopefully will get, get that result on September yeah, I'm, 15th. I'm sure that will be taken care of because the Nevada State Athletic Commission, you have... Uh, the, the chairman, Anthony Martinella, who's a, who's a strong commissioner, and he's in charge of the commission. You have Bobby Bennett, who's the executive director, doing a hell of a job as well. And uh, these guys are no-nonsense officials. They are ready to take action, whatever it takes. Everybody thought that this fight being they were so big and uh, uh, good for the economy, well, they said, ah, oh, that fight going to happen anyway. No, no. Commission said, we are not going to tolerate any nonsense. We're going to go... For for the, you want to play hardball, we play hardball. You know what? And they did it. That's it. That's it. I have so much more respect for boxing because of this. I'm not kidding. I, I, we talked about before we said it's a black guy for boxing. I think if you take what happened here versus what happened in the first Triple G fight, where the first one we actually got a fight out of it. I mean, we got to see these guys. It was amazing. But it came out of it looking corrupt. And, and it wasn't corrupt, but it looked bad. It looked bad. Well, this the, shows integrity for the sport. It shows that we that the, the Nevada State Athletic Commission and boxing as a sport will not put up with this stuff, regardless of who the name is. And I, I'm proud of, of, our, of our state's athletic commission for yeah. what we did. Honestly, God, honest, I am. No question about it. Me being an ex-member of the Nevada mm -hmm. State Athletic Commission, I can tell you that I take my hat off to them for a job well done. Okay, talking about a job well done, how about a job not well done? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> this past Saturday. Yeah, let's talk about the we're United doing, Kingdom Athletic well, Commission. We're talking, about, the, yeah. we're, we're talking about the... Uh, Deontay, uh, Anthony, Anthony Joshua versus Joseph Parker fight. Now, that fight was shown here uh, live, and it was in the early afternoon because of the, the, time, difference, the yeah. time difference, and I was ahead. So what happened was that a score, the score of the officials for this fight, first of all, I can say that Anthony Joshua did not impress me at all. No. Did he okay. win, though? Did he win the fight to you? He won the fight. He won, yeah, me too. I just he want to won. say that ahead of time. <laughs> he won the fight. I have no question, but I don't like the way the scoring was. I mean, one judge... Gave it 119-109. That means he only oh gave God. Parker one round. One, which round? I don't know what round, but it was. <laughs> he only gave one round. Then they gave it 118-110. Another judge gave him two rounds. And the other judge, 118-110. Come on, what are the judges watching? Speaking of 118-110, that was the. But you know, but what I'm saying is that judges sometimes, I say, what are they scoring? Are they scoring what they're hearing or what they're seeing? You know, come on, judges. You might want to keep the, the sport clean. 
and let's do it the right way. That's exactly but, what we were just talking you about. You know, man. We, we can't do that, judges. I mean, we go. You guys go to seminars. You, you know what the, what the four criteria is going to fight. People say, what are they what what is what are they scoring? You got to score on a effective aggressiveness, the cleanup blows, defense, and regeneration. If you go with the four criteria, you're going to score a fight right. And I can understand you're going to miss some shots, and I always said it, until they raise the position of the judges from here to up here, they're going to see better, but that's another topic. <laughs> yeah. but, but the thing is, is that the judges, you cannot score what you hear. You have to score it the right way. Come on, guys. You got 12 rounds. You want to get, give a guy who's undefeated. If you think he only won one round, fair. But in the eyes of everybody around the world, you got to give the guy at least four rounds. At least. You know? I mean, there were some rounds there that were very close. And I said, oh, wow. That's what the judges are in the hot seat there. But come on. Don't give every round just because it's close. Give it to, to Joshua, who's the, the, the most popular of both fighters. You know, you got to call it the right way. And we both love this sport. You've worked in it your entire life. I love this it. is something that we... That, but when you hear people do... When you hear uh, some fight fans, casual fans, say things like the sport, you know, the, the contender has to come in and, and he has to fight not just the, the champ, but he also has to fight the... The, you know, the judges and the ref and the blah, 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 blah. We hate hearing stuff like that. As fight fans, we hate hearing that because it's not always true. There is usually, you know what I mean, some sort of fairness and integrity in this sport, and that's what's beautiful about it. It's two men in the squared circle. It's a sweet science. And then when stuff like this happens, it's just more black eyes, and it's, it's not good for the sport. Yeah, yeah, it's not. A boring fight where one guy's just trying to protect his paycheck and his legacy, and the other guy is never going to get a fair chance. I say, you know, the judges you have to be selected. In the proper manner, you can say each judge has so many championship fights under his belt. He has not been in any controversial decisions in a number of years. I'm not going to say you're going to have all your fights 100% right. But if you have the majority of your fights on the right track, then you'll be qualified for that fight as a judge. Yes, the commission and the sanctioning body have to get together and make sure. Or maybe they should have a, a panel of, a, of a, an advisory board that can oversee the selection of the judges and the referees and say at the end, you know what? Guys, not for nothing, but you guys made a selection there, but we as, a, as an advisory committee feel that maybe that referee or that judge should not be appointed to that particular fight. Something has to be done because you are continue to be having these, these controversial decisions. Yes, the right man won. Okay, that's the, that's the good part, but not by a landslide like, like the judges had it Saturday night. No, and let me ask you, because they had, this is the second one in a row where Anthony Joshua has not impressed you against uh, Carlos Takam, and he didn't impress you against, uh, and he didn't impress me either in either fight. You know, he, he impressed us. Uh, he impressed the world against Klitschko. Let's be honest. I mean, he's he, but, okay, well, yeah, but he fought Klitschko, who, fought was, who, 30, who, who, who was already at the tail end of his career. Year old Klitschko, and, and he was already had. A, he just lost to Fury. Yeah, and he had a, 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 held the championship for like ten years. I mean, the guy was a good champion. Klitschko was. Klitschko's, I mean, an all-time great heavyweight. Yeah. But yeah, but you can when you beat a guy like Klitschko at this time, you can't say and praise and, and praise this guy Joshua as the best. Especially the when he got knocked down in the middle he of it. He got knocked down. Come on, he got hurt by uh, the guy Knight, another heavyweight in the, in the most recent fight. He got hurt as well, and uh, you know, and then Parker kind of shook him a little bit, one little punch. I there. saw the one, the one-two. So, yeah. And so, you know, he has, I, I, I wonder about his chin. I think maybe he got a, a glass jaw. Well, you know, I think he doesn't, have a, he doesn't have a top heavyweight chin, let's put it that way. And, uh, you know, the guy that they keep naming to go up against has a, what I consider an all-time great right hand, a sledgehammer of a punch, and that's uh, Deontay Wilder. Well, Deontay Wilder has a good, powerful punch. The right hand, and not too bad with the left. But, not too bad with the but left. But the other right. thing is that he comes with that wild... Right hand, you know, he connects. If he connects you, you're in trouble, even though it's wild. But you know, he got. I like to see more of the straight punches. You know, oh, yeah. You know, when you throw in those there, the jab and the straight right hand. But he throws a jab, then he throws a right wild hand, right hand, and he'll throw you from all angles. He'll come out, you know, and that's kind of wild. It goes with his name, Wilder. <laughs> you saw that? He almost caught me. I had to do the Floyd. I had to do the Floyd shoulder roll. Yeah, I luckily. <laughs> anyway, the thing is, John. Keep your guards up at all times. I know, time. I know. I felt like Victor Ortiz right there. I was standing there. When you were around a fighter, uh, you're right. An ex fighter, you, you never, keep your guards up. You never know, man. Unless, I may lose it and, 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 and cold cock you. <laughs> Any point. Anyway, oh my God. so anyway, so with the Wilder and, uh, and Joshua is a fight that the fans really want to see. And it's they're making it harder, man. I mean, this is uh, we've talked about this forever in boxing. Look, you don't want to point names because there's not a single promoter who hasn't made it 
you know, difficult to see the fights we want to see. And they don't do it, you know, they do it for the protection of their own fight. They sure. do it for the right reasons. I'm not, I'm not sitting here saying they're trying to make the fans' life difficult. But you see a lot of, a lot of dragging your feet, and this is on my opinion, on uh, Joshua's end when it comes to uh, Eddie Hearn and Matchroom Sports. A lot of, I mean, and I don't blame them. If I was them, I would try to fight Dylan it, White. It, it, Again, it, I'd try and fight Pavekin. John, it's a, it's, a, it's a business. Yeah. You know, back in the old days, it was about who's the best out there. But now it's a business. They got to say, okay, you know exactly. what? Exactly. With all these pay-per-views and with all the money that's in boxing now, they're going to try to capitalize as much as they can. I mean, look, Canelo gave up his WBC belt, what, three years ago? So that he wouldn't have to fight his mandatory uh, guy named uh, Gennady Golovkin at the time? Yeah. Well, I mean, it happens, man. Well, so, so, so they have three or four fights in between, and they make an easy $10, $15, 20000000 million before they go Stacking into the, the, to the tough guy. So if, if Yasha wants to make another $10, 15 20, $25 million, they're doing it the right way. Stay away from Wilder for a little while, and then cash in later on with Wilder. What, can, what do you think, what would sway the other way? Do you think fans, uh, put, fans putting pressure on it would sway it? Well, well, today with social media, you guys out That's there, social I mean. media, keep demanding. That you want to keep fight. doing it. Yeah, you want the fight for September. You want that fight, Joshua and Wilder. You have to fight the fight you want yes. to see. You know, I mean, make it now. Forget, I agree with you. Forget about making it three, four years down the line. You know, Floyd Patterson. I remember one time he lost Muhammad Ali. They lost a heavyweight championship. You know what? So you lose. So a big deal. You come back go for the rematch. The rematch would probably be better. You like that's Canelo, one thing I was going to say. Canelo Triple G. People, you want the attention. They can get it. Take. Let's fight now. And if you lose, okay. You know what? I'll give you a shot. Put a clause on the contract. Make sure I'll be able to fight you again. If, I think, I think if I, when I look at the heavyweight division right now, honestly, if I, there's two guys. And then there's a wild card out there with Fury. I mean, and no one knows what's going to happen. But Fury's name does carry a payday. If I was Eddie Earn and if I was Matthew Sports, I don't know anything like they know. But I think there's more money in a trilogy fight with Wilder and a potential setup fight with Fury, maybe in between or at the end, than there would be fighting all the rest of, I mean, all the, rest of the, the scrap heap combined. And there's a lot of good fighters in there, but nobody who's got any money names. You yeah, know what I mean? No yeah, one who's selling yeah. fights. Well, well, you know, Luis Ortiz gave a Wilder a tough fight. I would fight. never fight Luis Ortiz if I was anything. <laughs> I guys. mean, Wilder, Wilder got, got rocked pretty good. I would never fight Luis Ortiz if I was any in, of those in guys. The, in the seventh round. And, while, uh, you know, Ortiz surprised uh, Wilder, surprised, surprised the fans. Surprised me. Surprised the fans about the outcome. And you know what? He, didn't, he got stopped in the tenth round, but he gave Wilder a run for his money. And Wilder said it himself at the end of the interview. He said, I can see why people were staying away from Ortiz. Yes. He's, a, he's a tough guy, and he deserves a fight again. One of those guys, maybe he can fight uh, Parker, or he can fight... Uh, uh, I think he should fight Pavekin. Pavekin is another guy, another good heavyweight who fought recent Saturday night and won by uh, technical Oh, knockout. yeah, he fought Pavekin, yeah, and he, and he beat Price. And, Price. and uh, yeah, hats off to David Price, who fought, uh, you know what I mean? He fought his heart out. It just wasn't... Uh, you was know, it a decision or a knockout? I believe it was a knockout. Yeah, I, I, I think, well, anyway, whatever. The thing was that uh, he beat Pavekin, Pavekin is back in the picture again. Because and he should be. He's only lost to Klitschko. Yeah, that's it. But because they both have a little bit of a history, like with uh, you know certain fights not not making it because I think they were eating some of that Ukrainian meat or whatever it was. They, uh, I would love to see <laughs> Luis Ortiz versus Pavekin. They're both like, well, they're both thirty eight years old. They both have a past that's. I would love to watch those. Well, two. That happens, that, that's what happens to some of these fighters. They stay around. Nobody was a fighter before. You know. Time goes by so fast. Especially when you're heavyweights, because you don't even really reach that weight well, until well, how long? Yeah, yeah, the heavyweight. Usually. The heavyweight, no, normally. You're like 26, 27 before yeah, you get up to that yeah, size. They develop at a later year for some reason or another. But uh, I tell you that uh, boxing is really uh, stirring up some, a, lot of, a, lot yes. of, a lot of noise out there because the heavyweights, you got the, the super, uh, super featherweights, fly. yeah, uh, yeah. flyweights. And uh, you got now you got Lomachenko fighting Jorge Linares. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Jorge Linares uh, versus Lomachenko. And you heard, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah, Pacquiao, Mat uh, Lucas Matisse. That was uh, uh, Oscar De La Hoya tweeted that, that that's official. Yeah, well, that, that was May 12th. Well, uh, is that what it is? Well, uh, Linares and Lomachenko. Yeah, when's the, uh, the, do you know when the uh, Pacquiao uh, Matisse fight is? Yeah, Pacquiao Matisse is July 14th. July 14th. And that's, look, we've had a lot of confusion on the Manny Pacquiao front over the last six months. Who's he fighting? Who's his trainer going to be? When's he fighting? Why did he, why did he pull out of that ESPN card? But right now, this is the most sure thing we've gotten, yeah. being from, you know, from Delahoy himself. And he's, uh, you know, but, uh, Matisse is a Golden Boy fighter. But, so. but, you know, one of the things with, uh, with Manny Pacquiao, uh, he's not going to have uh, Freddie Roach in his corner. Which is You know, he's going to have this guy, Bube uh, Hernandez, why? who's been working uh, with, with uh, uh, Pacquiao in the gym. But for some reason or another, Freddie Roach is not going to work this up-and-coming fight with uh, 
Lucas Matisse. Those two are synonymous, man. You think of the two of them, you think about, you know what I mean? Look, yeah. Freddie Roach has been the man uh, with, for so many fighters. He's been uh, uh, the trainer for so many greats over the years. But when you think of Freddie Roach, you think of Manny Pacquiao. And it was a shame because they, they asked Freddie Roach about, you know, are you going to be uh, in his corner when he fights? I think it was Alvaro, uh, Alvaro, whoever he was going to fight before. Yeah, but and he was like, I haven't heard from him. Like, yeah, I haven't heard. Exactly. Like, he, didn't, he hasn't even called him. Well, this fight with Matisse and, uh, and Pacquiao is going to take place in, in Malaysia. Malaysia? That should be a good Malaysia. fight. He's got a lot of good fans yeah. there still. He's yeah. still, dude, his team's still talking Lomachenko. Like, that's a, that was a, a, a headline today. Yeah, right yeah. after like, the, after the Matisse fight, he wants to fight Lomachenko. Well, I don't know. I, I can't understand that. How, how can he go? I mean, Manny Pacquiao was a uh, super welterweight, 154. How you going to go down to 135? <laughs> Come on. The guy's already, you know, seen his better days. And, you know, who knows if, you know he, can, crazy? Who knows if he can get by Matisse? Yeah. I, I don't know. You know. I think, I think they, should both, they should both bow out after this fight. I you think know, that's you know, Manny Pacquiao has been one of the greatest uh, fighters in the history of boxing. Yes. I mean, there's no question about it. The man deserves, deserves all the kudos about everything. He's just been the best. And I think that Manny Pacquiao, after this fight with Matisse, whether win or lose, he should pack it in. Because, you know, he both recently, he built a... A, a bunch of, of like homes. A th over a thousand different homes. A thousand different homes in the Philippines for the people who are going through some difficult Good time. Thing, and that's a good thing that he did that for them. Nice. Good thing that he did. And uh, and now that he's a uh, you know, some congressman, crazy, congressman in, in the politics, he, he's going, okay, you got another career. But you know, at, ever since he got into politics, which is not a bad thing because he, he's look, looking at himself after he retired from boxing, but you can't do both. You can't give 100%. No. Let me ask, who do you see that would make more money for Lomachenko than a Pacquiao fight? Well, I'd I like to see, uh, well... I mean, I know I'd rather see him fight Mikey Garcia. Yeah, I'd rather well, see him well, fight... That's a fight. That's a fight. I'm going to say that. Mikey Garcia and Lomachenko is a fight. But, but Lomachenko got to get by Jorge Linares, mm -hmm. who's not a pushover. No, he's not. No, I don't yeah. want to pretend that he is or yeah. act like he is. But, but a fight I think we'd like to see at a good weight, 135. You think 135 is where they fight it? Yeah, I think 135 would be good. 140. 140, I think, is solid because I don't think, I think 147 is too big for either of them. Yeah, I think 40. And Mikey Garcia is, I think 140 sounds 140 good. 140 would be good for him and, and Mikey Garcia. Lomachenko. I'd love to watch that fight. Yeah, that'd that'd be that's the fight, fight I want to see. I think that's the fight the fans want to see as well, you know? That whole weight area right there yeah, from yeah. one, you know, 140 up to like, because 140 there really isn't much, yeah. but 147 has got a lot. Yeah, but at Pacquiao, uh, Matisse fight yeah. is going to be uh, on ESPN. Yeah, okay, that's good. That's going to be ESPN good. ESPN is, is killing it right now. Good yeah. for them, man. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they got the, the Crawford fight, too. Uh, hopefully that stays, you know what I mean? Everything good. Was that June 8th, I think? Yeah, yeah. but that, that uh, Lomachenko and Linares fight is also going to be on ESPN. Good. Well, yeah, yeah. the top rank, top yeah, rank that, has that, all this. Yeah, that's going to be yeah. from Madison Square Garden in New York. That'll be a good one. But it, there's a lot of good things happening with boxing. And I'll tell you this, uh, ESPN is really doing a hell of a job and, and putting up all these fights. I couldn't agree more. And, but... Uh, I want to see more. The commission is out there listening, sanctioning bodies. We have to work more with the referees and the judges. I know we do it on a regular basis. I'll be going out uh, April uh, 11th. I'll be out in, the, in Spain giving a seminar to the officials out there, judges and referees. But the thing is that we have to do this more on a regular basis, all sanctioning bodies. Just send, send out some of your top judges and referees and, and train these uh, uh, judges and referees because... We have to raise the bar, you know. But also, the other thing is that I told you before, that Cortez 2020 system, raising your judges up where they can see 2020 and not see 2100, 2200 for the <laughs> understanding position. If you know about the vision test and whatnot, you definitely can see better from up here looking down than you can from here looking straight, you know. And the commission, uh, Marisa Suleiman, promised me that he's going to do it with the uh, preliminary fights in Mexico City. So, really? Yeah, we told me. I didn't hear about that. Yeah, That's he, awesome. Yeah, he told me a while back when I was giving a seminar in Mexico. No, because I mean you've been talking about this forever. I mean yeah. you were in Ring Magazine. Yeah, but, right? yeah, but Marisa Suleiman is the only one to come forward and say, Joe, I want to go forward. Well, I, I, I give it, I've given the seminar in Mexico City. When I gave the seminar about a year and a half ago, we said it back then we're going to do it, and he promised me. Most recently, he said, Yeah, we're going to follow up with it. People say, Well, Joe, you're going to block the view, raising the judges up. No, we're not going to block the view because we'll put acrylic chairs. Like I said. In tennis, you got the referee sitting up in a high, high up here. Why are they up high? Because they can see better. They can see the lines. I want the same thing with boxing. Raise them up high, put acrylic chairs, and, up, and up high, you can create a million different apparatus to put in place. But I said the, the most inexpensive way to put an acrylic tennis-type chair, have the judge up there, and let him score the fight from there. I guarantee you 
of my test that I did with judges years ago, they miss only one to two punches from the upper level. And from the bottom level, the standard position where they are now, they were missing anywhere from 9, 12 to 19 punches per round per judge. Come on. If I want to lose, let me lose with the judges yeah. up on the top who hardly didn't miss any punches. Hey, I agree. You know what else I heard? The other, I've learned a lot. Of, I've been looking into this a lot since the day. I love your other theory about putting them in a room with a TV and uh, not having any interference from otherwise, and you can see every punch because the cameras are better than eyes at this point. Right. I've also heard a, an idea of five judges, and you take the, big, the, ones that, the, the, the two biggest outliers and you get rid of them like they do in uh, the Olympics. Yeah. And then you just go with the three in the middle. Do you like that idea? I don't well, dislike it, that it, idea. It's not something that could be looked into. I'm all for to. more fairness. Like I want, I, I'm open to anything. Get the, get the score right. If you fans out there have any ideas, put them out there. Ask some questions. Come on, bring them on. I'm gonna, you know, I'll tell you, we're trying to better boxing. You have any ideas, put them out there. Ring Magazine uh, gave me a, an opportunity to put my, my, my story out there. I asked him, just a little column would be, no, no he gave me four pages. But I sent him photos, a whole stats. Photos or the pictures of the fighter on the standing position right here with the judge right behind, where the judge now is on the top. So I sent him photos of both here and the punches that are thrown here. They couldn't see it, but when I threw the punch here from up there, he could see the punches both fighters are connecting. So I sent him all kinds of photos. Those of you who saw that Ring magazine about three or four years ago, that's the story that came out there. I, I went to Puerto Rico. I went to, uh, I contacted the Nevada Commission, I, the, everybody. Nobody seems to understand my, my, my value. This, this means a lot for boxing. It means a lot for the fans. It means a lot for the fighters. You know, you want to get a clear, clear view of a fight? Go with my system. I guarantee you, you'll see much better. You'll see less uh, controversial decisions. There you go. You there know, you what else you want? I agree with you. I, that's, I, I like that, man. I, and I th feel like, get it right. Like, you know what I mean? No matter what we do. Five judges, three judges. Get the score right. If the scores are so bad or so many years, give me a chance. I tell you, I guarantee you, you're going to say, wow, why didn't we think about that years ago? I think when they first started the boxing, they put the judges at the low level. It was the wrong position from the beginning. And they and, just kept it going. Yeah, when the tennis, did they change the, the tennis when they started? They didn't start down here. They put them up here. The tennis uh, referees, they yeah. can see better. And right. even in tennis, it's even like because they're on the same level. Right. Like in boxing, they are raised up. Right. So they should even more so be up high. Exactly. Anyway, the thing is, is that we're going to make some changes. You guys up there listening, put out your, your information. Give your opinions and what you think about these uh, uh, judges and the position we, we should have. If you have any ideas. We always love hearing your comments, questions, exactly. anything like that. Seriously. You know? So, uh, John, we're talking about uh, coming up now in the next uh, couple you, of who months. Who do you think Triple G's going to fight, man? Triple G, you know, I like to see him fight Billy Joel Saunders. I think with, everyone wants to see I him. I mean, the fight, they're already, they're already blocking the space for the uh, uh, Cinco de Mayo. Yeah. Tommy going to fight either. Golden Boy going to put a show together. Uh, Triple G going to This is the first Saturday Cinco de Mayo since, I think, De La Hoya fought Mayweather. Like, yeah. Like, we always have Cinco de Mayo weekend where there's a fight, but not on Cinco de Mayo. That's what made this that big a deal on top of everything else. Yeah, maybe I got to make a comeback by You might have to. Come back there. Then. I, I wish know. we had a, another Mexican <laughs> fighter to fight him, but there, there's none. Hey, guys, you know, boxing is really uh, heating up right now. We got, you know, April, May, June. Oh, my God. July. A lot of big fights coming up. And I think uh, the, uh, the networks out there, ESPN... Showtime, HBO. Uh, HBO, you know, the PBC. There's been a lot of boxing. If you go to your, cam to your, to your calendar, your uh, guy, your TV guy, you'll see that there's boxing every night of the week, whether it's replay, live, or whatever. There's boxing all over. People say they don't see boxing, but you, don't, you must not You're have, not looking. Yeah. You, must, you must not have cable TV, but they're on there every night. You can see boxing. You can have boxing, and not just that, but you also have, with the social media, so you can access the fighters, you can access their training camps, the you records. have shows, and, and as much journalism, I mean, stuff like what we do, yeah. where you have as much access to boxing as you could possibly fill your head with. It's pretty exciting. Yeah, exactly, exactly. What I can say is that the United Kingdom has really raised a bar with boxing. They've done a lot with boxing compared to when I first started refereeing in the United Kingdom 25, 30 years ago. Boxing has really risen to a, to a top level. It's huge. I got to take, I gotta take there, off man. my hat to a Great Britain for a, a job well done. They built that sport so big out yeah, there. Yeah. I mean, Anthony Joshua is legitimately one of the biggest names in boxing, if not the yeah. biggest name in boxing right now. Yeah, now, talk about the, the, the referees and, and, and the fight of Pacquiao, the uh, Anthony Joshua fight. We got some people that... Yeah, have, we had a lot of, yeah. A lot of questions about the, the performance of, of the referee. Mm -hmm. Real nice guy. Uh, he's from Italy. And... Uh, 
you know, they, they put him in, the, in a major fight like this. He only had four world championship fights on his belt. That is not. And a I got a lot of calls. A lot of people calling me, Joe. What happened? Even the commentators were upset with with uh, breaking up the fighters too often, uh, letting the the hand wrap, the, the the gauze, the tape around the glove that was mm -hmm. coming off was hanging. And then he did all he did was tuck it in. Then when uh, Joshua got a little hurt, he called time and take him to the corner to do something with the glove. The thing was that there was a lot of, a lot of couple of couple of times there. And I mean, I got calls from all over. I said, Joe, what the hell happened? Where did they get this referee from? I said the commissions and the sanctioning bodies got to scrutinize the whole system. I mean, you got to really look and see close. Who are you going to pick for your referees or your judges? And I said that before the early part of the show. I maybe have an advisory committee that can yeah. that can say, you know, yes, we 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 kind of approve of the selection of the officials, but you can't put somebody in a major fight like that. He could have really screwed it up big time. Mm -hmm. Could think the right guy won, but uh, you got to put in a referee that has a lot of experience with at least 25 world championship fights under belt. I mean, this was a, these were two heavyweight world champions of the world. I yeah. mean, two undefeated heavyweight champion. You don't want to put a guy in there with, with hardly no championship fight experience. Exactly. You know, he, he, under under the pressure, you, could, you got 78,000 fans. You know what that is? Oh I, my God! I mean, it's a lot. I mean, I, I remember refereeing a fight with 136,000 fans. At Mexico City, double, but, yeah. but, <laughs> I, but at least I went in there with some experience. Exactly, and I was good under the pressure. But I, I can't imagine putting a referee in there who didn't have the experience. And I felt sorry for the referee Saturday. It's not his fault. He took the fight because they assigned him to it. Who wouldn't take the fight? I'd take know? that fight right now, but exactly. I shouldn't take that. But they exactly. shouldn't be offered that exactly. Fight. But yeah, the commission or the sanctioning body got to be careful. Say, you know what? We're going to give it to a guy who's qualified. For that position. Let me ask you, you something. Know? I, I know we have a lot of listeners from the UK. They talk to us all the time. They always shout us out. Um, the biggest takeaway from this fight, the biggest criticism that that ref got was that he broke up the fighters a lot, broke them up too much. Now, a lot of UK boxing fans might remember there was some criticism over your Ricky Hatton uh, Mayweather right. that you would break them up too much, wouldn't let them fight inside. What, was, right. what would you say is the difference between what happened there and well, what happened here? Well, well my fight with Ricky Hatton, who, who I take my hat off to him, the great champion, a good, a, good, a good man. And uh, is that, you know, when, when you get into clinches, you, you can't be wrestling inside. You mm -hmm. start wrestling and, and roughing it up inside. The rule says you're, there's, there's no clinching like that and roughing it up inside unless your hands are free. And they were clinching. They were holding too much. And I had to break. I had to separate them. And uh, the fans didn't like that. But that's his style of fighting. Mm -hmm. But there are rules that we have to do. Uh, you know, we have to follow as far as. Yeah, you can't hold them and throw too, them around. Too much excessive holding. But uh, in this fight, in this fight here, there was hardly no, 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 no clinching at all. I mean, the, the guy was, they were in the corner, about to throw a punch, and the referee jumped in and separated him. I couldn't see that. But, uh, you, I mean, you guys are great judges in Great Britain. And I, I, I know that they didn't use a fighter from United Kingdom, a referee from United Kingdom, uh, because I guess because. Conflict they, of interest. Yeah, they didn't want to maybe put the pressure on the referee from there. But they could have definitely bought in like they have in the past. Referees from out of the country with a lot more experience. Than uh, Giuseppe, yeah. who, who was, uh, like I said, no fault of his. He, they assigned him. He took it. I mean, I mean, seventy-eight thousand people, man. Like, tough. that's a big deal. Yeah, seventy-eight thousand people. Yeah, we got a question from one of the fans out there, Charlie. What's do, you, do you think uh, uh, Joshua Wilder is uh, the new era of Ali and Fraser? No, I, I don't know. The, what the question is: Is Ali and Fraser the new uh, uh, Joshua and uh, Wilder? Is that the new Ali Fraser? No. Absolutely not. They're not even close to it. Ali Frazier were all the way up here. These guys, Joshua and Wilder, are, are the newcomers. They're just starting out. They're not at that level yet. Maybe, Although, I will say... If maybe we, someday they will be there. I will say they're the closest thing we have to that in the heavyweight division. They are the two top dogs, and uh, I 100% agree with Joe. They're nowhere near those two guys, yeah. but they are the two clear front runners in the, in the heavyweight division. And Right now. And, yeah. Okay, yeah, no question about it. I think that... Uh, Joshua is definitely an outstanding athlete. And you know what? The only thing about Joshua, he's still in the learning process. Yeah, and, so is Wilder, fights, man. and so is Wilder. I mean, they're still, you know, they're not at the level, they haven't peaked yet. No. You know, they're getting there. They're learning from their experience. And it takes a little while to get there. Another two, years like Canelo Alvarez, before he fought uh, uh, Triple mm -hmm. G, they didn't want to put him in three or four years ago. He would have been a, a defeated very easily. On Triple G, but they waited until he matured a little bit more. Those other fights that he had helped him to get to the level that he was able to compete with uh, 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 Triple, Triple G. G. And he was able to compete. I mean, he, he fought a very competitive he, fight. Even though person. a lot of fans thought he lost a fight, but he, he never. I mean, he didn't get demolished. I thought he lost, but it was what? I mean, 
for yeah. eight rounds to four. I mean, it wasn't in, in my view. It was not a, or, or honestly, you could even say seven rounds to five. It was a, it was a super competitive fight. Yeah, but a heavyweight championship fight last Saturday, giving uh, Parker only one round, uh, and, 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 and giving man. two rounds. You know, come on, judges. You know, you got, you got to know what you guys are watching, but uh, maybe you guys should have stayed home and watched it on TV. You would call it better. <laughs> but, 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 but due respect, I think you guys, all we have to get on the. Uh, on the, on the board together, get everybody to give me more seminars. Another question out there for somebody, Charlie? Yeah, somebody mentioned at the end of the show, they asked uh, this, uh, about Canelo pulling out. Canelo pulling out from the fight? Well, <laughs> it's go not, back and watch it, the it, beginning it, of this it, it, show. It, <laughs> we talked about it, it for like 10 minutes. It, it's not that Canelo pulled out from the fight. It's just that he got temporarily suspended because he tested positive for clenbuterol. Well, no, he did pull out today. Like well, him and his team, they yeah, officially... Yeah. Well, they're going to they're gonna announce it now that they're going to... Uh, if they're going to announce it, that they're going to take responsibility, uh, unintentional, that's the best thing they can do because then they'll be, they, they qualify them to be the suspension. So it'll be one year, they cut it down to six months, then the fight will happen. September you can 15th. cut a, a mandatory minimum suspension is, is one year for your first offense. But if you uh, comply with the commission, which is, seems like is what he's going to do, that's why he would pull out is in order to be able to stay with the uh, work with the commission and get it dropped to half. And half is six months, brings a perfect time to September 15th, which is what we think is the greater plan in all this, Mexican Independence Day weekend, watching the rematch, finally one year to the day, just about. Well, guys, you know, we want to say a, a little goodbye here because uh, our time is up, because you are the ones that are making this show be successful. We pump our heart. We love you guys. Keep up the good work. Bring all your, all your questions you may have. And remember, we are just trying to give you as much information as we can we're not trying to knock anybody. We're just trying to be, we're trying to critique people out there. We're not there to crit criticize anybody. We're there to critique, critique, and then make sure that we are all on the same page. I, I feel that uh, in boxing, that more judges and referees getting together, have more harmony amongst each other, work with each other, help each other out the way we do here in Nevada and I've done all over the world. Try to keep all the judges and referees all on the same page so we can uh, make it to another level. With that said, John, We'll say goodbye to our fans. And remember, guys, I'm fair, but I'm firm. Touch them up. <laughs>